is our presentation on the European refugee crisis. To begin with, in order to understand the issues in Europe uh, with refugees, we first have to talk about the issues that created uh, this mass flow of people. So to begin with, we look at the country of Syria, uh, where a lot of these refugees come from. A large part of uh, the unrest that began in Syria uh, began because of complaints about corruption, lack of political freedom, and unemployment. But it especially got um, bad when the new president, uh, Bashar al-Assad, who has been president since 2000, uh, has continued to repress the state um, throughout his rule. And so various protests have started uh, for the president's resignation. And, and as those protests began, a, a really serious crackdown began to intensify from that existing government towards the opposition. And so the opposition began itself to take up arms to defend itself. And hundreds of rebel brigades uh, began to go into battle, and the violence started to grow into what would become a civil war. Uh, and so the problem with what began in Syria is that it, just, it wasn't just a war between uh, rebels in Syria and an established government in Syria, but other world powers began to get involved in this conflict. Uh, Iran, Russia, Saudi Arabia, and even the United States began to bring their military, their financial, and, and their political support as well for the opposition, but also for Syria, and began to play a game between the two powers, uh, which continued to exacerbate the situation of war and battlegrounds um, throughout Syria's landscape. And so as both sides continue to fight, they committed uh, various atrocities that have caused deaths and also have created huge divisions between the communities in Syria. But what would then complicate it even more is that various political extremist groups who uh, themselves claim to represent some faction of Islam, um, even though they really don't, have also began to join this war, um, creating a much more complicated and obtuse conflict for these exter external powers, such as the United States and Russia, to really navigate um, how do we um, support a faction? Is it connected to one of these groups that really no one should support? Um, these kind of questions have um, really caused the situation to be a very difficult situation to deal with, especially when you begin to get three different sides instead of even just two sides. And so just a really difficult situation in Syria at the moment uh, for the last um, few years as well. And so what we see is as this situation of war has increased, as daily life for people has gotten just very difficult, huge numbers of refugees have started to pour out of Syria, uh, and even surrounding countries that have faced some of the conflict, uh, they cross the borders uh, just looking for better, a better life where they're just, you know, places where there's not war, um, because their own government can't provide for them uh, the protection that they need, and, and really the only choice they have is to leave. Uh, a lot of times, uh, that looks like trying to cross the Mediterranean Sea in what is really just resembles a rubber boat, um, looking to get to places such as Greece or Italy, um, even walking through borders, uh, trying to get to Hungary. Um, and so as they try to escape war, um, really, they're just clinging to a small hope of starting a new life again. The reason for this is that they have to live in fear. Uh, these people are really just terrified of their families being killed, um, or they themselves losing their own lives. Um, and so as daily life becomes harder uh, because of lack of food or health care, um, you know, lots of people have been dying over the last few years, and even just from things that, you know, like from hunger or lack of essentials, um, and because they're just food and other necessities are extremely expensive in most parts of these countries. So again, uh, these, this complicated situation is causing people really just have to try to leave and get out of the country that they're living in for a better life. So, you know, once these people get to Europe, uh, a lot of times they're really just stuck in these border states. Uh, one of the big causes uh, for the crisis itself um, are various uh, European Union policies uh, that have caused the crowding that's happened. Uh, there are policies that dictate that the people who are fleeing from conflict have to stay in the border state that they first arrive in, and they can't then proceed to get to other states, uh, especially states such as Germany and Sweden, where a lot of these refugees are trying to get uh, because they're much more open to um, people who are seeking asylum. So a lot of times they end up end up in camps where the conditions are really poor, not only because they're stuck in these border states, but also because German government and other governments take just really long amounts of time to process the asylum applications, making it really just impossible for them to ever reach territories that they're trying to reach in the first place. So it's, you know, after having talked about some of the causes, a lot of the uh, events, you know, go along with the causes. Uh, but what we've seen is that, you know, these people, they're moving around in their own country until finally they have to exit to find a better place to live. You know, I don't, their first option is not to leave, is to try to find somewhere else until their options are exhausted. But then we see them trying to cross in a very dangerous way the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, there's lots of different countries that are having to be involved in this crisis. Um, and, and Germany itself um, has taken a large hit uh, from, you know, in its government, uh, being kind of attacked for the fact that they've taken on a lot of these refugees. But also, we've seen that them trying to make deals with uh, Turkey and, again, crowding the border states in just really awful refugee camp uh, condition. And so, again, looking at this picture, we see the, just the totality of the danger of these people trying to cross out of Syria uh, to get to places such as Italy and Greece and Turkey. Uh, and those dark spots in the map are just places where tons of people 
um, have died trying to cross over. The United Nations uh, Refugee Agency has um, claimed as many as 350,000 people having crossed the Mediterranean since just the beginning of 2015, uh, 107,000 of those just in, in July alone. And once they arrive in those countries, they're trying to get to the rest of Europe, again, especially Germany and Sweden, um, and most of those refugees are Syrian, uh, fleeing from civil conflict in their own country. Uh, this kind of ma migration is only comparable uh, to the kind of migration that took place uh, at the beginning and during World War II. Um, and so we see just tens of thousands of migrants and refugees uh, fleeing unrest. They're pushing through the Balkans to Hungary. Um, and many of them are continuing that desperate trip to get to, say, Germany or other countries in Northern Europe. Um, and so here's one specific event uh, in Hungary where the Hungarian government decided to close a, a train station at Kaledi. Uh, there was a kind of a collapse and uh, just too many uh, refugees kind of there illegally trying to cross their borders. And so they closed it down. Um, and a lot of those refugees just decided to, you know, march on it, try to get through the opening. But uh, because it was all closed down, they had to camp out in the station, around the station, and we see um, just a very sad kind of situation going on there for them. Here's another instance um, of people trying to cross to get to Italy, uh, to the island of Lampedusa, where there's kind of a makeshift camp set up for them. But again, uh, 150 people died uh, just from drowning trying to get there uh, to the small established camp. Um, here's a major event that happened, which is um, this picture of this small boy. Uh, on the news uh, on a beach in Turkey in September of 2015. Uh, also on that same di day, his mother and his father, along with 10 other refugees uh, who are trying to cross from Turkey over to Greece, uh, they passed away as well. So this is very dangerous situations for these people as they're trying to just get a better life. Uh, here is the chancellor of Germany, Angela Merkel, shaking hands with the Turkish prime minister uh, at a press conference. And these two have really tried to create some kind of agreements to try to deal with the difficulties of the situation that they're dealing with, uh, with all of the unrest, uh, trying to create plans that will settle all of these people who are seeking asylum. Uh, but at the moment, really, they're hitting a maximum of 72,000 people who are going to get settled. Um, Germany taking 15,000 of those people, uh, but it's significantly lower than the number of people who need to be settled, who are piling up in these camps trying to get somewhere. Uh, and so the exchange of sending people to Turkey and then taking one person per person that's sent to Turkey um, it's kind of how Merkel uh, intends to overcome this crisis that has really just caused a lot of people to question her reputation. And uh, that's how she's trying to overcome this, but uh, that's kind of to be determined in the future. So some consequences out of this real quickly. Uh, really, the consequences are still to be determined because the events are still ongoing. There's a lot of displaced people. Uh, there's lots of mixing of cultures um, and ideologies because of this. Uh, and so you see a lot of friction between different societies as they're coming in contact with each other in ways that they hadn't ever before. Um, and so one of the unfortunate negative consequences of this is anti-refugee, anti-Islamic um, xenophobia, this fear of people who are different, uh, who come from a different place, who look differently, who believe differently. Um, and we also have seen um, Brexit, which is the exit of the uh, United Kingdom from the European Union uh, through a referendum. Um, mostly because of the European refugee crisis. Um, and then also we just see just the continuing destruction of the homelands for all of these refugees um, who, you know, they're trying to find a better life, but they can't even go home even if they wanted to because their homes aren't there anymore. Um, and so again, uh, the numbers continue to grow. Um, they don't really show any signs of stopping. Um, these camps are getting bigger um, and people kind of feel like they're just left out to dry um, with no end in sight to their current situation. Um, there are children and people who are going to grow up in these situations um, and a whole generation of people who uh, are products of this. Um, and just people looking for shelter, aid, health care, clean water, um, just ways to survive and live in the world. Um, and a lot of those people are children, unfortunately. And so you know, for, uh, one great, uh, greatly awful consequences of, of this is just lots of countries in Europe really trying to secure their borders, trying to keep people out, um, trying to lock down um, their own situation. Um, because, you know, these people bring the conflict with them uh, is kind of the perceived thing that's going on. Um, the countries see violations of interstate relations. Uh, and so a lot of these refugees aren't being welcomed very well into these countries. Um, there's lots of space in Europe, um, probably enough space to settle these people. Um, but also just as these countries are coming together, um, as these people are moving into new territory, it's still to be determined whether these European countries are going to benefit from the huge number of people that are now dwelling in their borders, or whether there will be more conflict, or whether the conflict in Syria itself uh, will ever kind of boil down and calm down and be resolved so that some of these people could return home um, in the future. A lot of that is still to be determined, and really there's just no um, clear direction for how that will ever take place.